Clipper Matt Barnes defending Blake Griffin during last night's win over OKC. Griffin and Sergi Baca got tangled up in the second quarter as Griffin went up for a basket, and that led to a shoving match. Barnes pushed Ibaka and he pushed back. Refs reviewed the play and decided that both Barnes and Ibaka needed to be ejected from the game, a call neither could believe. So what do you think? Did the refs get the call right? Uh, whose side are you on? We welcome in our NBA analyst, Tim Legler. Thanks for joining us. Mr. Legler, we appreciate you being here. Boy. I give the question to Stephen A. first, and then we'll go to you. you got There's no way on earth the referees were correct. There's no way on earth. Right. And, and I want to take a moment to, I, 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 I'm, I'm not, I, I don't like to, I don't imitate Skip Bayless. I don't stand up and applaud the way he did LeBron James when he won his first world championship. But I will say this. Are you going to applaud I, somebody? I, I wanted to. I want to, actually. That would be Jeff Van Gundy. Uh. His color commentary on that game oh, last yeah. night was nothing short of outstanding, particularly this incident. Because as much as I love the peeps at the NBA, who I've covered for more than 17 years now. I mean, it, the, the stuff that transpires sometimes is just beyond me. I know a lot of these officials. I know league officials as well. It's just, it's out of control. It's out of control. And, and, and Jeff Van Gundy pointed it out with the vehemence, with the emphasis, with the disgust that I think most basketball lovers feel. There is no way on earth that that warranted an ejection. I'm sorry, don't get me wrong. I don't even believe, don't get, don't, I'm not advocating violence and all of this other stuff. But even Matt Barnes, who was more wrong than anybody because he really didn't have much to do with it, shoving Serge Ibaka didn't warrant a suspension, I mean an ejection. I'm looking at Serge Ibaka and, and Blake Griffin, they get tangled up. You shove them a little, so what? So what? You saw guys up in there. You immediately saw teammates from both sides separating, trying to keep things under control. Sometimes can we try to trust these guys to really know how to hone in their anxiety, their anger, whatever the case may be? Just trust them a little bit. And I understand since the, the brawl at the Palace and Auburn Hills, we're, we're highly sensitive. And you don't want to give the impression of any kind of thuggery or anything like that. You've got folks to patron, that you want to patronize your product. So the NBA is not completely wrong here. But at the same time, exercise some common sense just a little bit. Serge Ibaka, he's six for six. He's got 13 points. He hasn't missed a shot. Not yet, okay? And you eject him from the game. And oh, by the way, Matt Barnes was 0 for 5 at the time. Oh, you eject him too. What a trade-off. I mean, if you're the Oklahoma City Thunder, you got screwed over. I mean, you just look at it and you just say, guys, I, I want to see these guys play. The Clippers won a game last night. They may have very well, well won anyway. But you know something? I would have liked to have seen Serge Ibaka playing in this game. Mm -hmm. And I would have liked to have seen if Blake Griffin would have had 22 and 12 with seven assists. I would have liked to have seen if DeAndre Jordan had had 15 and nine with Serge Ibaka in there to contend with, even though I do applaud DeAndre Jordan. He actually hit three of his four free throws. I almost fainted. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. Very, very good after missing 10 straight coming into the game. I'm just saying it's like calm down because we want to see these guys play. We want the passion. We want them going at each other. We don't want them singing kumbaya, hugging one another. We want them, you know, uh, uh, fighting on, in a basketball sense. And I just think that the officials sometimes are just out of control. And obviously, that has a lot to do with the mandate that the league has handed down. Skip Bayless. They're out of control because they're way too in control. Mm. They do overreact. They are oversensitive to the malice at the palace and what it wrought. So, to me, my takeaway was that Matt Barnes actually made a very sly play. And that was sly provocation to, to provoke Serge Ibaka into, I, I don't even know that he shoved back. I don't know that what he did. I have no idea why he got ejected. But the refs are always, fair is fair, you go, you go. But the guy who was completely out of bounds to start with was Matt Barnes, who comes running in with a two-hand shove. It's not exactly throwing a punch, but still... As you point out, Stephen A., the entire game flipped at that moment because that was an unfair trade. You know, the Thunder really lost on that swap mm -hmm. because at that point they went into halftime up nine. They lost the second half by 17 points. And by the way, they shot almost 50% the Clippers did in the second half while going two for 13 from three, which meant they got a whole lot of easy shots because there was no more Iblaka in the paint, right? <laughs> and so w it, was a, it was a shrewd move on Matt Barnes' part. He's played that role a few times in his life. So what threw me was that 
why wouldn't he just proudly and smugly take himself to his locker room and enjoy being the unsung MVP of the night? Instead, he immediately tweets during the third quarter from the locker room, breaking NBA rules and protocol, that he's tired of taking one for his team. Well, you, you just won the game for your team. What, what do you, what's the problem here? Tim? <laughs> by the way, by the, guys, way yes. by, by the way, they did get out rebounded by 15 as well and 10 on the offensive just board. Got Let's keep that in mind yeah. too. But go ahead, Tim. You guys both made great points. Now, just looking at the incident and how it all went down, it, it was a hard foul. There's a history between the two players. Yeah. Blake Griffin clamps down on Sergi Baca's arm and tries to pin it to his side. It's a veteran move. It's a trick. You try to keep the guy in one place. So Blake Griffin pins him at the side. So Sergi Baca takes his arm and shoves him off of him. End of story. It should have stopped. At worst, double tech. So you guys both calm right. down for the rest of the would night. Would you have called the double tech just to stop? I would have called a double tech. All end right. of story. The because problem of the is, okay. here comes Matt Barnes. You got nothing to do with this. So I actually don't have a problem with them throwing Matt Barnes out of the game, to be sure. honest with you. Sure. Because he's escalating everything, and he has nothing to do with it. It would have stopped right there as soon as Ibaka flung him, and they stepped in, double tech. End of story, play on. And everybody's at full strength. Matt Barnes comes in, he gives a shove because he considers himself a real tough guy. And he has an edge to him. I'm not saying he's not a tough guy. Right. But he, he wants to say, hey, look at me. I, I, I'm a bad guy. I'm right here. I'm going to shove you. Now Ibaka reacts to the shove. <laughs> And he gets thrown out just for reacting to someone shoving him that he wasn't. And by the way, with. and he never hit him. Didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. He raised he his like arm. He, dropped, he, he drew back. He just he drew, drew back. back. That's all. But it didn't even he move forward He drew back all. just to let him know, you're not going to come at me like that again. That's the part that I really agree with you guys the most is, you know, we, we want, everybody wants there to be emotion in the game. This is a big game. Not all NBA games are the same. This was a big one. Matter. These two teams could be facing each other in the Western Conference Finals for all we know. They're two of the elites in the West. It's a big one. We haven't had a whole lot of big ones to this point in the year. This is one of the biggest. Right. We want emotion. We want passion. We want everything. And then as soon as something gets a little bit slightly out of control, guys are getting tossed and the game takes on a different tone. And to me, that's what I was most disappointed in. I was enjoying the heck out of that game. Mm -hmm. And I still like the second half. And the Clippers yes. did pick but up their defense. But you said you don't mind that Barnes no, got ejected. But what about Ibaka? Absolutely no way since Serge no. Ibaka been thrown out of that game. Well, not just that. It no, also, no, no way. The other thing is, as Jeff Van Gundy and, and Breen, who also does an exceptional job, pointed out, is that if you recall, last year, Ibaka cold swiped Blake Griffin in the privates. Yeah. Now, that's oh. man rule one on one. You don't violate that. those things. Right. He should have been suspended for the month for that one. I don't, you don't do that. You just he, don't he do that. He was retaliating. You, I'm just you saying. Don't retaliate that I mean, you don't retaliate yeah, yeah, right. there. There are right. certain things you just don't yeah, right. violate a level of sensitivity. So the point that I'm trying to make to you is that the fact that he did that, he should have deserved harsh punishment then. Right. But not only did he not suspend him or anything, you didn't even eject him from that game. So how do you justify not ejecting them from that game, but then ejecting them from this one? It makes no sense. What did Jeff Van Gundy say? Why don't we just drop, drop the, cage the cage on them uh -huh. and just see who the tough guys uh -huh. really are? You know, I've all, you know, you, I, that's what I've said when it comes to baseball. I've always brought that up because you know you're not going to get into it because the dugouts are going to clear and you're not going to really get an opportunity to really, really fight. Everybody can look tough like that uh, under those circumstances. All right, Skip mentions that uh, Barnes tweeted uh, yeah. while the third quarter was going on. Let's take a look at that tweet. Uh, I love my teammates like family, but I'm done standing up for these inward. All these bleep does it cost me money. Uh, so I'm going to ask you, Stephen A., if you were his teammate, how would you feel? Well, first of all, I totally concur with what Doc Rivers had to say. You got to watch your language. There's no doubt about that. We don't need to belabor that issue. We've done enough of that with incognito. But I will tell you this. Uh, he was wrong for doing that. But more importantly than that is the kind of message that you're sending, too. Because, you know, even if you feel that way, mm -hmm. why would you tell the world, I'm not fighting for my teammates anymore because I'm going to lose money. Why would you, why would you elocute that? Why would you disseminate that? Put that out there for everybody to know. So now, if I'm your teammate, I'm looking at you, all right, well, clearly I, I can't rely on you being what I customarily know you to be because you just finished saying you worried about your dollars. Okay, I got it. I hear where you're coming from. But to sit there and say that publicly, that's a very, very big deal because you don't hear that very often from athletes, professional or amateur. You do not hear guys say, I am not going to fight. I love my teammates, but I'm not going to fight for them anymore. You do not hear that. The fact that he said that, 
I was shocked because I've known Matt Barnes for years and there is there's an there, there's not a punk bone in his body. That's not who he is. If anything, he needs to reel it in, as we saw last night. That's not who he is. That's not his MO. That's not his nature. So for him to say something like that really, really resonates because now it's like, all right, it's about your it's about your dollars. You ain't really, really thinking about us anymore. And the Matt Barnes that I know has never, ever given that impression to a teammate, to my knowledge. All right. He later deleted the tweet. Tim, well, it's too late. Yeah. It's already out there in the open. I agree. I mean, the message that you're sending is, look, the dollars are more important than me standing up for my teammates. Now, I already said that I disagreed with his reaction on the court. It was an immature overreaction on his part for a veteran player. I don't know what, what exactly he was doing. And then he goes in the locker room and in an emotionally charged state of mind hits send. Again, a veteran player shouldn't be, shouldn't be making that kind of a mistake. That's the kind of thing you would see out of a first or second year guy sure. that's never been in this situation before. Matt Barnes has been through all the wars. He knows better than that. And the message you're sending is exactly that. You know, it's interesting. When I, when I was in Utah early in my career, Carl Malone got into a, an altercation with Larry Kostowiak on the court. He was down the other end of the court. This was back before the whole step on the court, you're suspended coming off the bench. Right. Back then, it was rules. Things went down. Everybody comes. We did. Everybody got fined. You know, yeah. I, I'm not making much money. Yeah. Carl Malone paid everybody's fine. Everybody came off the bench to defend him. He paid everybody's fine. Nice. That got announced the next day of practice. Anybody gets fined for last night, I'm, you know, saw the film. I know who came off, who didn't. If you came off the bench, you're going to get fined. I'm going to pay you fine. Now, I don't know if they do that in the NBA anymore. My point is, if you're Matt Barnes, keep those thoughts to yourself, okay? Because as it stood, you got ejected, but in the mind of most people, you were coming to the defense of your teammate. It's the kind of thing that as an athlete... You want to know that guys are there to support you. Was it a smart move? No. But the bottom line is, even if you're mad because you're going to write a check to somebody, keep that to yourself. You don't need to broadcast that. Hey, I'm not going to be there next time because it's going to cost me dollars. It's a big reason why he's in the NBA to begin with. He can play, but exactly. the biggest thing is that he's feisty and he will fight for his teammates. That's one of the most attractive commodities he has. So we could be dealing with, on the surface, a Coach Herman Edwards memorial, don't hit send. Right. In the emotion of that moment. But I look at Matt Barnes' career, I don't consider him so much of an enforcer as an instigator. He does instigate a lot. He's always the fly in your ointment. He's just irritating. And he's physical enough, he, he can do a little damage. So I, I, I'm not putting him down here. Right. But I'm trying to read deeper into this. Okay. I'm starting to wonder, because of all that we have heard, some of it on our show from Chauncey Billups, about one Blake Griffin and his toughness or lack thereof. Who's he calling out here? I, I'm just reading between the lines. I'm just looking. Is he calling out the whole team? Is he saying, as a team, we're not tough enough? Is he pointing it at Blake, who certainly had a lot of fingers pointed at him? Is it time for Blake to step up and, and defend himself instead of doing the veteran pin move and, and going ahead and squaring off and, and taking it? Face to face to Ibaka? Is that what? Maybe he's trying to make a state. Maybe he's trying to call out his teammates in a constructive well, way. I'm just, just throwing the thing, possibility out. Only thing that I would say to you is this correct me if I'm wrong. Jared Dudley, JJ Reddick, nobody's really thinking about them on that level. They can play. I think they're good acquisitions no for the way. Clippers, but you're not thinking about them like Jared Dudley's a nice Nobody, yeah. nobody is going to try that with Chris Paul. You, you cancel that. <laughs> Just trust okay, me. But, Ain't nobody pushing around okay, Chris but, Paul. But he's six feet tall. I understand. Right. But nobody's right. pushing around. Chris Paul's a I pit bull. Nobody's pushing him around. And I've never seen anybody really bother DeAndre Jordan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so there's only really one other person. <laughs> you know Thank you. Saying? And so I'm not going to sit there and say you're right. I just can't say you're wrong because I don't see anybody bothering DeAndre Jordan. Nobody will dare bother Chris Paul, okay? Right. And nobody particularly cares about Reddick or Dudley, even though, again, they can play and I like them. Mm -hmm. So that only leaves Blake. Well, that, are you saying that you don't think Matt Barnes would have done that if that altercation involved some no, one, no, of, no, one no, of his not other at teammates? No, 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 not at all. I was just addressing his point because okay. I think Matt Barnes would have done that for any of his teammates. But I'm saying based on what Skip just said yeah. in terms of Matt Barnes saying, I'm not coming to the defense of y'all. Mm -hmm. Like, who would he need who to come to the defense uh, of? Uh, yeah, I got because you. nobody else gets bothered mm -hmm. but Blake.
That's what I'm saying. And I wish we had this information at our disposal right now. I'm curious to know what has Matt Barnes been cutting checks throughout his career? No, no. Got for, I haven't. For right stuff here. like this, Barnes has been reportedly fined a total of fifty-five thousand. I will tell you this throughout his career. Since when? Yeah, since, throughout his career. Since career. I, I will tell you this. Tim brings up a very, very valid point because I don't know whether that happens. I've never asked, but you do know that old school cats. Carl Malone wasn't the only dude to do that. There have been times guys that were old school. If you came to their defense. I mean, hey, they took care of you. $55,000 is a lot, total career? Mm, not really. I mean, re for a guy like Matt Barnes yeah. that is involved in a lot of stuff, like mm -hmm. Skip said, throughout the, he's been in the league a long time. Yeah. Mm. He, he, his name he's comes up a lot. Out of eight games he's in the middle of scrums five. a lot. It seems yeah, like so. he's one of those guys. Yeah. Yep. So, no, that's not really fit. You could, I mean, you, nowadays, I mean, you could get whacked 25, 30 for one incident. So 55 yep. really, to me, doesn't sound like a, a big number. But, you know, I, I think I think more than anything, that tweet is about a person. Was, and it was about the frustration of the fact that he wasn't going to be playing in the second half of that game. Because you even saw the demeanor when he was walking in the locker room. How, like how dejected he was that what just happened. And now he's got to watch the second half of a big game from the locker room. I, I think that was part of the tweet as well. He probably sent that as soon as he got in there, he grabbed did. that phone. I mean, he did. minutes and later. And the locker rooms are right, like they're right, they're very close to one another because the Clippers locker room is beyond the Lakers locker room right. from that tunnel yep. and the visiting locker room. I, I, you know what? I think they could have made a fool of the officials if Serge Ibaka and Matt Barnes walk into the locker rooms, which is practically right next to one another, just a few feet apart, instead of going into their locker rooms, had gone up to one another while the cameras yep. were following them back and said, look, man, there's no problem. Because then you would have realized right then and there, look, look, it was just an emotional moment. It's not a big deal. Let's move beyond it. And unfortunately, that didn't happen. But if they had done something like that, the officials, to me, would look even worse for having ejected them. All right. Would have been nice Tim to see. Tim Legler, thank you so much for joining us. You always upgrade the situation. We appreciate it. Coming up next, arrested on the last day of his bye week, Dwayne Bowen.